Father, thank you for today. Thank you for uh, the beautiful place that we live in. And Lord, we want to say this is the day that the Lord has made. We will choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I want to pray for each one here, Lord, or on the, in the building or on Zoom. I want to pray, Lord, that you'll encourage them, that you'll speak into their very hearts. Uh, because, Lord, we are here for one reason, and that is to praise the Lord. Help us to focus our eyes on you, Lord. And, Lord, I want to pray, Lord, that above all, Lord, may you be glorified in this place today. Because this is all about you. And, Lord, we just want to give you the praise, give you the glory that you deserve. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to sing a song that we learned a few weeks ago called You Are Alpha and Omega, which reminds us God is the beginning and the end. Thank you that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. And Lord, you know all things, that nothing takes you by surprise. So Lord, you've seen the moments in the last week where we've been encouraged. You've seen the parts in the last week where we've been discouraged. And Lord, we thank you that the one constant, 
constant assurances as to you are faithful whatever season, Lord, we are in. Lord, we want to give you all the glory this morning for what you are going to do, Father. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks because of Jesus that we're here. And Lord, we just want to pray for each one that they'll know your goodness today. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's lovely, isn't it, what we've just done to sing those words to God. We'll give you all the glory. Some of the songs we sing are to him. Some of the songs we sing are actually singing to each other. And we're going to sing a song in a moment to each other, if you think about the words. But before that, I just thought it would be good to think about why we sing songs when we come to church. If you've been coming to church for a long time, you might have got it all sorted in your mind as to why we actually sing songs, or you might not. You might just have gone with the flow and thought, oh, well, that's what we always do. If you've not been to church before, you might be wondering, why are these people together singing songs? Why do they do it? So I've got a magnifying glass to help us think about this. And I've got some things here that if anybody wants to come and look at under the magnifying glass, they could. I've got some leaves and some plants and some shells and some corks and some very tiny messages. Um, messages that I certainly can't read without a magnifying glass. I don't know if other people can. Come and have a look, guys. Yeah, come and have a look. I don't know which of these magnifying glasses are better, but um, have a look. There's three magnifying glasses and three people here who want to have a look. So have a look at any of the messages or... Can you read those messages? This says one says God is good. Can you see that under the magnifying glass? The magnifying glass helps it to be clearer. It says God, is good. God is good. Okay. Can we read any of the others or see anything else under the magnifying glass that we couldn't see? There's a shell. Oh, what have you seen on that shell that you couldn't see before? Different colours maybe? Yeah, pink on the shell that you couldn't see without the magnifying glass. And a message you can't read. You managed to read it without the magnifying glass. Okay, brilliant. Does it, is it even clearer with the magnifying glass? Or does it make no difference? Slightly clearer with the magnifying glass. Okay. We've seen pink on some shelves that we couldn't see before. We're being able to read messages more clearly. Another good is God. What can you see on there? You better put it under the magnifying glass then, Noah, if you can't see which. You couldn't see the... The, the glittery bit inside, that shell's got a glittery bit inside that you couldn't see without the magnifying glass, but the magnifying glass makes it clearer. Ah, pink that you couldn't see. The magnifying glass is helping them to see a lot of these things more clearly. How do you think, guys, how do you think that we can see God more clearly. We don't need a magnifying glass, do we, to see God a bit more clearly? That's a good idea, Gabriel. Yeah, do that. Put the magnifying glass on your arm and see what you can see that you couldn't see before. Can you see a few things that you couldn't see before? The magnifying glass helps you see yourself a bit more clearly as well. What do you think we need to help us understand God a bit more clearly? We don't need a magnifying glass, do we? So give Sammy a go. Thank you, Charlotte. Give Sammy a go. I've got a pile of things over there. Noah, do you think you could just pass me that pile of things over there? And then maybe you can tell everybody out there what this pile of things is. Because I think that some things in this pile help us to see God more clearly, just like the magnifying glasses help us to see those things more clearly. What's this, Noah? The timeline. The timeline. And I think we, you know that in Sunday school, what happens with this timeline? We put it on the floor. That's right. We put it on the floor every week to work out where in the big story of God we're thinking about today. I think doing that kind of thing helps us to understand God more clearly, just like the magnifying glass helps us to see those things more clearly. And what books are they? Um, the Holy Bible and the Big Bible Story book. Brilliant. Some storybooks, some Bible storybooks. The Bible helps us to see God more clearly, doesn't it? Just like the magnifying glass helps us to see these things more clearly. I reckon, boys and girl, 
I reckon that actually all the people in this room can help us to see God more clearly. I reckon if we had a question or a thought about God, one way to help us to understand God more clearly, oh, that's, your eyes are much clearer when you put that up to them. One way to help us understand God more clearly is to ask one another. So just like the magnifying glass helps us to see things more clearly, the Bible and the timeline and people in this room help us to see God more clearly. And I don't know whether any of you who've been you can see the mud in there that you couldn't see. That's interesting, isn't it? The magnifying glass helps us to see the mud in the shell more clearly. Well, you can turn that into an illustration, can't you? How, when you do look at God, you see the things that are wrong in your own life, don't you, more clearly? Those of you who've been to church for a while might remember singing a song, We Will Magnify, We Will Magnify. And when we talk about magnifying God, we can't mean making him bigger, can we? You can't make God bigger than he really is, but you can see him more clearly. And one of the things that helps us to see God more clearly, just like the magnifying glass helps you to see these things more clearly, is the timeline, is the Bible, is the people in this room. But one of the other things the Bible says helps us to see him more clearly is when we praise him. If you pay attention to the words that you're singing, and if you pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is doing inside you as you praise him, you will see God more clearly. We're going to sing a song that's just got two lines in it, really. Praise the Lord and Alleluia. And it's a song that we're not singing to God. It's a song that we're singing to one another. to because you're singing to each other I would love the people on this side of the room just to turn and face that way and the people on this side of the room to turn and face that way because this is a song that we're singing to each other we're telling one another praise the Lord because doing that helps us see who God is and experience who God is more clearly and some of you won't be surprised to know that I'm also going to suggest that this side sings the praise the Lords and this side sings the Alleluia bits, okay? <laughs> Father, we thank you for all the things that help us see you more clearly. 
because father that's what we want to do we want to see you more clearly and to experience you more fully and we pray lord that today as we stay in this room or go into different rooms you would help us to see you more clearly and that as we praise you that would happen amongst us thank you for the gift of being able to praise you amen mm -hmm.
Lord, in all these songs, we thank you for, for the victory that you have over the grave. Lord, our hope isn't just something which is alive, but our hope is truly eternal in Jesus Christ. And Lord, that gives us confidence that no matter what we go through, we thank you, Father, that you are right there with us. And Lord, I want to thank you, Father, again for today, for your word, that your word is living and it's active and it's sharper than a double-edged sword. I want to pray for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit as I preach. But I also want to pray for anointed preaching and anointed listening to hear, to respond to what you want to say to us. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've got your Bible, perhaps you can turn with me to the book of Psalms and Psalm 47. This is what the Word of God says. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King over all the earth. He subdued the nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy. The Lord amid, the, Lord amid the sounding of trumpets, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of Abraham for the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Amen. And may God bless reading of his holy and inspired word. And most of you might know this, but I'm not really one to follow the church calendar, really, to be honest. I follow Easter and maybe, um, what do I say, Advent. But uh, today in the church calendar, does anyone know what day is in the church calendar today? Anyone know? Ascension Day, yeah, or Ascension Sunday, yeah, because Ascension Day was on Thursday. So this was the, well, this was one of the readings in one of the lectures. It wasn't for this year, but it was uh, for uh, two years ago. And the passage just really grabbed me this week uh, when I was praying. I've never preached on this passage. It always gives me a bit of excitement to preach on a passage which you've never preached before. But the, the psalmist begins, clap your hands, shout for joy. There's a lot of expressions in this psalm, isn't there? You can't help but hear the psalmist's passion when he, when he pens this psalm of worship for God's people. And he begins with an invitation to God's people, clap your hands. You know, we, we often sing it from when you're younger, don't you? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. But dare I say, where, where did that acclaim uh, come from? But actually, when the, the psalmist says, clap your hands, you can do it if you want. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Um, okay. What they were doing was an ancient greeting in Hebrew, which he would do at the coronation of a king. You read about it in 2 Kings chapter 11. So when the psalmist says, clap your hands, it's an image that the people of God would have recognized. They did it to and fro that Yahweh, the Lord, is king of all the nations. Actually, he says, shout to God with cries of joy. You know, I've got the joy, 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 joy. There you go. 
Thanks, Kirsty. Wish we had you on the microphone for that. She's legged it now. <laughs> but can I say to you, as God's people, we are called to be people who look at the expressions of these psalms. We praise God. And when we praise God, there should be a vibrancy amongst God's people. There should be a joy in our hearts that he is king. How, and then notice, he says, why we should praise the Lord. Verse 2, how awesome is the Lord most high. You know, the words there, Lord, is, uh, you know, it's just really calling people to him to not just see Jesus as king, but he is the one who is sovereign over all things. That's our motive in worship. You know, Jesus isn't just one, or God isn't just one of many deities, but he is above all all powers. He's above all kings. Also, it was an invitation for God's people to remember. He subdued the nations under us, peoples under us. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. Have you got a little word that says underneath something there in your Bible? It says Selah, right? What does it mean when it says Selah? What does it mean? It says simply just to stop Think, reflect. And the sons of Korah, when they're in that, he, he's saying, actually, stop, think, reflect on the greatness, the power, the majesty, the awesomeness of God. And now stop and think about his faithfulness to you, the Israel, the Israeli people, that God had been with them. He'd been with them in the beginning because he created them. He'd been with them when, even through their disobedience. He'd been with them. He'd been with them in Egypt when they were in bondage and slavery. He'd been with them even when they had turned to idolatry. He was with them. He, was, he raised up Joshua, remember, to lead God's people into the promised land. And he was with them. He had chosen them. And that's what it means in that passage. He's actually calling people to remember the reason why we have motivation in our praise, why we're joyful in our praise was actually remember when you look back and you can see God's hand, how he was with you. When you went into the promised land, remember? When God led his people into the promised land, remember, he was with you, Jacob. There the word, the pride of Jacob, it's an allusion to Israel. He was with you. Can I say to you, when we go through times in our worship, is it just me? Sometimes we have to look back to remember all of God's faithfulness to us. When you look back at the tapestry of your life, when you can look back at as many blessings, and can I say to you, when you're going through the times of adversity, when it's very difficult, can I say to you, sometimes the things that you need to hang on to, just remember the blessings of your past. And that gives you strength for each day. you need to look back. Look back and remember God was with you, Israel. God was with you. Praise the Lord. Clap, you people. Shout for joy. How awesome is He? But it doesn't just stop there. He said, remember, you're the pride of Jacob or Israel, whom he has loved. Can I say to you, we, when we praise, we love because he first loved us. And actually, as God's people, remember in your worship this morning, as you come before him, that you are loved by him. You're loved by him for all of eternity. Nothing will ever be able to separate you 
from his love, from his care, from his compassion. Praise the Lord. Clap you nation, shout for joy. This is good news, isn't it? But also too, it wasn't just good news there, I said, for individuals. It was good news for the nation when they look back. And can I say to you, sometimes we can get a bit disheartened when we look at the church in the United Kingdom sometimes. Certainly I do sometimes, if I'm honest. I think, well, the nation's turned from God. Can I say to you, God will still be faithful to this nation. Do we believe that? Do you believe that God's finished with the United Kingdom yet? Praise God. You know, actually, as God's people, let's remember that he has chosen us and that we are loved by God. But then in this psalm, it wasn't just a call to look back, but actually there was, in this, there was actually an image of looking forward. Remember, God has, has ascended amid shouts of joy. The Lord amidst the sound of trumpets. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. Musical worship isn't just something that we declare, friends. In worship, we actually sing to Jesus and about Jesus. Does that make sense? Sometimes we focus on the sing praises about Jesus, but actually we sing praises to him. Why? Not just because we want to remember his character, but actually we remember that God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen? God loves it when his people sing praise to him. You know, and actually that's why worship is so, so important. That we give a sense in our worship. God has ascended. It was an image there of the people of God when they came to the temple and worship. They used to come not just as an individuals, but they used to come as a community of faith. The priests, they all had a role, they all had a responsibility. Can I say to you, friends, we as a people exist for worship. That's why we exist. Worship exists because missions doesn't. We don't predominantly exist for mission. We exist for worship. Make that clear. But as God's people, you know, actually the image of God has ascended, shout for joy amidst the trumpets. The trumpet was an image of victory. And as God's people, in our worship, we must remember this, friends, that we are victorious in our worship of King Jesus. Amen? We have to remember that, friends, that when we come together in worship to praise, that Jesus, the King, is on the throne. Amen? Now, friends, the people of God, it wasn't just that God inhabits the praise of his people. But actually, have you noticed how much of the Bible is song? And I'm not just talking about the Psalms. If you look at, dare I say, even some of the greatest people that God used who were worship leaders. Miriam. Remember Exodus chapter 15? What about Deborah and Judges? She was a worship leader. She wasn't just a prophet. She just wasn't a governor. Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Even Paul. You think about Paul, the great worship, oh, sorry, the great preacher. Paul, even when he was in prison, sung psalms and hymns to him at midnight. 
I probably saw the guys in the cells, I would be like, keep quiet guys, it's midnight, I'm trying to sleep. But why am I saying this? Actually, praise should govern us, should shape us. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Psalm 150, all right? And actually, as God's people, sometimes people say to me, Gav, you, you like a lot of music, you like a lot of songs. And I'm like, yeah, I do. And it's not just because I like music. I do, I love music. And one of the reasons why I give space in music is because actually sometimes we have to sell our hearts before God to be ready to receive, to hear from him. God has ascended. He is king of kings and he is Lord of lords. But also too, it isn't just, dare I say, right at the start, in Psalms or Genesis that you read about these worships. But actually, even in heaven itself, it's a place of worship. 365 days a year. You're saying where? Revelation chapter 4. Day and night they cried out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Or dare I say, even if you want to go a bit further, if you want to see a worship scene in heaven, look at Revelation chapter 7. You know that the nations, the tribes, the tongues will all come before the throne of the Lamb and they'll say, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the... You know, friends, friends, friends. Let's be a community who this ascending, Ascension Sunday pause to reflect. Remember, we are called to sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. But also too, we recognize that we can praise God, not just as a personal invitation, not just as a community, but we praise him because, verse seven, he is King of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. We praise him because he is sovereign and he is in control. Praise God for that. He, he's sovereign over the situations in Ukraine. He's sovereign over the situations in Iran. He's, there I say, Rishi Shishak was talking about yesterday, how he, and once it's the intimidation of maybe about China. God is sovereign over all situations, friends. God knows the beginning and he knows the end. You know, I... I I know that's, I don't know how many of you watched the coronation. I'm sure that most of us did. And there was that Alan where even in that service, you, you felt, I mean, well, maybe I did, but I felt my smallness a wee bit. And I could see the ceremony and it was great. But can I say to you, the coronation of King Jesus it's far greater than even in that. Amen? He is king of kings, lord of lords. He's worthy of all of our praises that God reigns. The, no, the nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of Abraham. For the kings of the earth belong to God. 
I want you to think how radical that statement is. Not just there I say in the context where it's written, where they face the intimidation of the foreign gods, the foreign deities, but even taking it into our present situation. Think about, dare I say, the regimes that some of you have seen in your lifetime. You've seen the uprise of Nazi Germany come and go down. You've seen Mao Zedong's uh, China regime fall. You've seen the situation of communism in Russia fall. You've seen that some of you may remember, dare I say, even the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. Can I say to you, remember... All the kings of the earth will bow to King Jesus because he is greatly exalted. He's seated on Ascension Sunday. We remember that he is seated in the place of honor. Amen? But can I say to you, as Christians, we hold on to that victory which is sure and certain. But we remember that the king who came as an infant will come again. That is our hope, friends. So are we going to clap our hands? That's not my personality type. <laughs> are we going to shout for joy? Are we going to shout that God has ascended amid shouts of joy? Friends, half past twelve will come. Forty-five minutes. Have strangers. You'll find me on the couch. Maybe not today. But can I tell you, you'll see guys there. If he score, you might get a. <laughs> Dominic, I saw you last night when Manchester City won the week. <laughs> was there joy? Yeah, very happy. It was very happy. <laughs> but can I say to you, as Christian people, we celebrate a far greater victory than that. As God's people, we have to hold on to the fact that Jesus is king. See, that's the thing about the Psalms. They fit the first context. Remember the coronation of a king? Clap, 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 clap. But they always point us forward to the greatest king of all, Jesus Christ who's here, who inhabits our praises. And he's worthy of them all, isn't he? He's worthy of them all. The late Jim Graham, some of you have known that name from Gold Hill, an amazing man of God. I had the privilege of doing a retreat with Jim and a few of our pastors six months before he died. And we were participating in communion together. I said, Jim, this is my body broken for you. Eat the body of Christ as you want. You know what he said? Shot. He said, I'm not ready yet. And I came back to him five minutes later. And he said, I'm still not ready. Come back to me. Literally 10 minutes later, I came back. And I looked and the tears were down his cheeks. And he said, I'm ready now. I said, Jim, is everything all right? He said, unless the cross of Christ has moved me to tears, I'm not ready. Because Jesus is king of my life. I had such a profound impact on me. Just to slow down. See, when we say Jesus is king, 
we're saying that, Lord, you have no rival. You have no equal. There's no one that compares to you. We were offered at the coronation, weren't we? An invitation to pledge our loyalty to King Charles. Don't misunderstand what I'm going to say here. I'm not going to ask you to make a pledge to Charles this morning, King Charles this morning. That's not an anti-royalist statement before I say anything, all right? So I don't want anyone to get to the door about that. I'm going to ask, do you need to pledge your loyalty again to King Jesus? Clap your hands. Shout for how awesome is he? For he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen.
Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are king over all the earth. And Lord, I want to pray for each one today that they'll know the closeness of the king. But also they'll never lose the wonder that he is king of kings and Lord of Lords. We want to exalt you, Father, as King of this church, King of our lives, because Lord, you alone are worthy of all of our praise. In Jesus' name, Amen.